everybody can hear me. All right, well, I will uh, officially call the meeting to order. Uh, certification of quorum. Uh, for you, Chair White, yes, we have more than 50% of the members present. All right, so I wanna welcome everybody to our March 24th GRCA meeting. Thanks for coming, folks online and folks in the room. I've just got a couple of remarks. Uh, the annual stocking of brown trout in the Grand and Conestoga Rivers is planned for May 1st through the 4th. Dates are dependent on the provincial hatchery and weather outlook. At this event, volunteers release fish in various reaches of the river, helping to spread them out into suitable habitats. Uh, second item is the 10th annual Brantford Community Tree Planting will be held at the Brant Conservation Area on Sunday, April 23rd. Brantford residents, friends and family are, to inv are invited to help plant 1,000 native trees and shrubs. If any board members would like more information about either of these events, please reach out to Eowyn. All right, so a couple of exciting things happening there. I'm just gonna move right on to a review of the agenda. I have a motion that the agenda for the general membership meeting be approved as circulated. Moved by John, seconded by Jerry. All in favor? That is carried, thank you very much. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Hearing and seeing, sir, go ahead, uh, Kevin. Thanks, thanks Mr. Chair. Um, I think there's an in-camera matter that involves, um, it's re-land in, oh, here we go. The property disposition, City of Brantford, GM 0323C01. I mean, although I don't have a direct pecuniary interest, probably appropriate at her conflict and not participate in that discussion. Fair enough. Okay. Is there a form to fill out here? Okay. Yeah, they so can, you they can give it to me afterwards. I can... Yeah, we can get that all filled out. Okay, Kevin, thank you. And when we get to that, spot you can vacate or whatever it is you feel inclined to do. Okay, anybody else? No, good, all right. So uh, I'm gonna look to approve the minutes of the previous meeting that the minutes of the annual general meeting held on February 24th, 2023 be approved as circulated. Moved by Christine, seconded by Sean. All in favor? That is carried, thank you very much. Oh, do, 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 all the way to correspondence. I'll, so there's some correspondence and they're, they're in the addendum that was sent out. I'll put the motion on the floor and then we'll see if there's any questions. Uh, uh, recommendation that the correspondence from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry to the office of MPP Ted Arnott related to Bill 23 and from Don McLean, Mary Covert and Ellen told me regarding protecting Ontario wetlands be received as information Move. Is that you moving it, Sue? I saw you. Moved by Sue, seconded by Gord. Any comments or questions on this? Uh, go ahead, Dan. Um, thanks, Chair White. Um, just a question. As as Bill 23 now, we've tried to digest it and, and all our staff. Do we have any more information of the nuts and bolts of how the immediate effect is is on us here at the GRCA. I know our staff at Haldeman County is still trying to digest it and and understand the ramifications. Okay, uh, Sam, do you want to? I can't get my microphone oh, there. Okay, perfect. I'm um, through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, staff have been working with um, municipalities and. Um, throughout the watershed in terms of the transition from Bill 23. I would say we're still kind of working our way through it. My understanding is there's some more regulations coming out in the spring related to some of the changes to the legislation that um, were enacted through Bill 23. So once those new regulations come out, we'll certainly be bringing reports to the board to inform the board of the changes that are required through those regulations and the impacts that they'll have. Great, I appreciate that. And and I guess maybe at this point in time, the best response to our constituents and, and residents that ask us about how does it affect uh, the, especially the conservation, the CAs, is just more information is coming and we're still trying to digest it, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's gonna be a, um, as we move through the MOUs and visit certain municipalities and so forth, there'll be more stuff in the local news, depending on what individual councils want to hear or see. So there, as we plow through this over time, there'll be more information, certainly from a local perspective. So 
hopefully that covers it. But again, there's still some of the regulations aren't out yet. And this is kind of one of those things. It's, it's the legislation is one thing, implementation is another. So we'll see how that works out as we go through. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Dan. So if there's nothing further, I will call the question on the correspondence. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Move, moving. I'm out of this today. Uh, moving right along 12 1, I'll put the motion on. Well, yeah, motion on the floor that the minutes of the Ad Hoc Conservation Authorities Act Committee held on March 13th, 2023 be received as information. You have the minutes there. It's go ahead, John. Oh, you're going to move it? Moved by John, seconded by Brian. And the minutes are there. And again, this is just one more step as we meet the um, requirements uh, of the province for Bill 23 and as we refine some of the the budgetary items and so forth. So are there any comments or questions? I'll call the question all in favor. That is carried, thank you. 12-2, that the updated inventory of programs and services be approved, circulated to all participating Grand River watershed municipalities posted on the Grand River Conservation Authority website and submitted to the Nat uh, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry in accordance with Ontario Regulation 687-21. Can I have a mover for that, please? Moved by Bruce, seconded by Sue. Comments or questions? All in favor? Sorry? Sandy, I'm sorry, did you have a question? No? Yes? Yeah, um, yeah just a quick one. So one of the things when I was going through it, and I admit I went through it kind of quickly, but um, Planning services related to natural heritage has been eliminated, but I noticed going through them that there are some things uh, that are about natural heritage. Could you explain sort of where that line is? Through you, Mr. Chair. So um, <clears throat> the natural heritage component that was removed was related to reviewing Planning Act applications um, in terms of management on our own properties and providing additional um, support from a category three standpoint um, is not included. It was just specific to the planning process um, that we were are prohibited from uh, providing comments in. So if a municipality was to ask for advice or help on something, you would be able to do that? Uh, as long as it isn't related to a planning question. Planning. Yep. Okay, thanks. All right, I'll just confirm I'm calling the question. All in favor? That is carried, thank you. Moving along to 12.3. Recommendation that progress report number four be approved, circulated to all participating Grand River watershed municipalities, posted on the Grand River Conservation Authority website, and submitted to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry in accordance with Ontario Regulation 687-21. Moved by Sean. Seconded by Dan. Comments or questions? All in favor? Carrie, thank you. Cash and investment status. The report number GM 032323 cash and investment status, February 2023 be received as information. Moved by John, seconded by Rob. Comments or questions on these? Zip did he do today, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. Financial summary 12-5, recommendation that the financial summary for the period ending February 28th, 2023 be approved. Moved by Sue, seconded by Brian. Comments or questions? Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. On the first page under revenues, so I see there's land sales of 15, million one hundred ninety six thousand four hundred four that wasn't budgeted for and that's generated the large surplus which i understand is going into reserve so just two questions uh, which which land sale is that and which reserve does it go into and for what purpose um so the land sale is the sale of a large property in the city of kitchener um that completed it took us about 10 years to get there but um completed last year and then, sorry, um, it's going into uh, the land sale reserve that's controlled by the province because there was funding that was used to initially purchase the property. 
So does the follow-up question. Uh, so do the province totally controls the disposition of funds in that reserve? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. So uh, yes and no. Um, there's guidelines in terms of what we can use the land sale reserve for. So purchasing other environmentally sensitive lands, we can use the funds towards the capital infrastructure. Um, there's about five or six different things that we can use this the land sale reserves for. But um, yeah, they do have control to a certain extent over, over that reserve. Yeah, so that's my last question. Uh, what are we gonna do with it? And I guess you're saying you've got in mind something that we'll be hearing about later? Um, so through you, Mr. Chair, we are certainly working with um, the different departments that could utilize those funds to uh, get ideas in terms of projects. Um, I think the challenge for us is, is gonna be staff capacity in terms of being able to manage the additional projects, but we're certainly looking into getting some of that uh, money spent. Great, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anything further on this item? So I will call the question all in favor. That is carried, thank you very much. Moving along to 12.6, janitorial and sanitation. Recommendation that the Grand River Conservation Authority award the contract for janitorial and sanitation supplies to Staples Professional for a term of three years with the option of an additional two years starting April 1st, 2023. Moved by Pam, seconded by Brian. Comments, questions? Kevin. Just wondering who has the current contract. Brian. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chair, it is Staples that has a current contract. Great, thanks very much. Okay. Okay, is there anything uh, further on the janitorial? I will call the question all in favor. That is carried, thank you very much. Moving along to 12.7, I'll put this on the floor recommendation that report number GM 022327 Conestoga Pheasant Club update be received as information and that the chief administrative officer be authorized to sign the agreement with the Conestoga Pheasant Club and the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters on behalf of the Grand River Conservation Authority. I'm gonna put it on the floor, moved by Jerry. Seconded by Mike. Just for those who weren't on the board, um, oh, well, maybe there's a few more details that I don't have, but there was a pheasant hunting program we had on some of our property that was managed by GRC and GRCA staff. But over time, it became cost prohibitive. We didn't have the staff, we didn't have the time. And it was a very specific kind of activity for, for, for a very specific group of folks. So we did negotiation back and forth to try to come to some agreement so that the, the program could carry on. And the report is there and we'll take questions, of course, but the, the, the folks who really want the program are gonna volunteer to operate the program. So that reduces our, our staffing needs. It allows it to uh, carry on and we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes because it seems pretty popular for some folks. And if we can find a way to do something that you know the community wants, we'll do it if it fits our mandate. And so in this case, staff, thank you for the hard work on this when it wasn't easy, so. Um, are there any, so with that little intro, are there any other uh, comments or questions on this? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I just wanted to, I recall that discussion from last year. And if I recall correctly, there's really no competing users wanting to use the, the property at the same time. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Well, there we do have snowmobiles that yeah. um, utilize the property and it is, um, part of the, the park area, but outside of <clears throat> that, in terms of a lease arrangement, it would just be the snowmobile club and the right. present club. And so you've worked on an arrangement with the snowmobile club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mr. Chair, I wanted to thank staff. I recall this was difficult and certainly for staff, for them to, you're moving staff into a kind of a not so comfortable zone where you have another organization uh, managing a program on land owned by the GRCA, which comes with it certain risks. And I commend the staff for being very innovative and open to this arrangement, which we're doing on a pilot basis. We'll see how it works out and hopefully it works out fine. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, go ahead, uh, David Miller. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, the report was actually really good. It, it delved into the uh, the background and the competing interests. So, uh, good report. Uh, my only question is, I did not see the agreement in our package. Was it sent? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So we were waiting until the board authorized um, us to um, sign it. So we did negotiate the agreement with um, the two parties and it's a pretty typical um, third party agreement that we would have with um, the clubs, I would say. So it's not attached to the, um, to the agenda, but um, the report does summarize the key aspects of, of the agreement. So, so just, okay, so just this is typically yeah. an operational activity. It's an operational agreement between the parties. The board typically wouldn't be involved at that level. Okay, then uh, I have a question then on the agreement, Mr. Chair. I'm just wondering about termination clauses. Um, are, how are they? Are there, there? There must be termination clauses in that agreement. Sure, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, we do have termination clauses and it's, um, they were negotiated, agreed upon between all three different groups. And um, yep, it's the pilot program though is for a period to the end of 2026 to give it some time to establish if, it, um, if it'll work and if it'll work for all three of us, so. Okay, yeah, I, all right, thank you. I just, I'm not, I, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> Um, the CEO signing an agreement that I haven't seen. So I'll abstain when it comes. Okay. A any further comments or questions? Okay. All in favor? Whoops. I'm sorry. Did I not? Okay. Sorry. Let's keep your arms going up and down. Did you have, are you just going to stay in, in favor position? Okay. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, so the next item is a permit application, but we do have a presentation on that. So I'll put the motion on the floor after we've had our presentation. It's Melissa Lurian. Lurian, Lurian is going to present today and then we'll take it from there. I'll just turn the floor over to you. Up to a thousand. Do you have a backup in case in case you're, you? I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> I always have a backup. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So good morning, everyone. Through you, Mr. Chair. Today I will be presenting to you permit number one forty eight twenty three, which was submitted by South Cambridge GP Inc., which proposes partial removal. Thank you, of a small wetland as part of a site remediation project. Um, before getting to that, though, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information um, about how the permit process runs here at GRCA. So GRCA permits are processed under OREG 15006, which is enabled by the Conservation Authorities Act. Permit review and approvals are based on GRCA's policy document for the administration of the regulation. The document contains policies for each regulated feature, including requirements, such as distances from features, allowable square footage, whether studies are required to support applications, et cetera. Permits are approved every two weeks at the staff level, um, but these are approvals that are applications that meet policy only. Permit applications that do not meet policy and staff do not support, but the applicant chooses to proceed anyway, are presented to the board in the form of a hearing. 
From time to time, we do receive permit applications that do not meet policy, but are supported by staff for reasons specific to the site and to the situation. These applications need to be reviewed by the GRCA board. Permits for consideration by the board include those that are not covered by an approved GRCA policy. They might have factors in addition to the policy considerations, which should be considered, or it, it precedes a decision or settlement of a legal proceeding or a tribunal, such as the Ontario Land Tribunal. The permit presented today actually falls within this permits for consideration category. The lands that apply to this permit application are located northeast of the roundabout at the intersection of Franklin Boulevard and Main Street here in Cambridge. The site is regulated by GRCA due to the presence of wetlands and a water course that are found there. The site is currently proposed as a residential subdivision by the applicant and work related to that application under the Planning Act is ongoing. In support of a draft plan of subdivision, a number of studies have been completed to assess the property. An environmental impact study and a phase two environmental assessment report identified that one wetland shown as wetland six on this map was historically used as a dumping site and contains garbage, metal drums, concrete debris, and other materials. Through these studies, the wetland and surrounding area was found to contain a number of contaminants such as metal compounds, petroleum hydrocarbons, and more. Several contaminant levels exceed the acceptable limits for plants, soil microorganisms, mammals, birds, indicating a risk to these receptors. So based on this, the works proposed under this permit include the removal and remediation of the southern portion of the contaminated wetland in the areas adjacent to it, so the forested area. This is the area that is outlined in red on this figure. As the excavation progresses, the soil will be monitored and sampled to determine if additional contaminated areas need to be remediated. So the extent of the wetland removed may be greater than 0.1 hectares. However, the applicant has committed to consult with GRCA staff if additional areas need to be removed. The contaminated area will be replanted with native woodland species post remediation. The applicant is proposing to create areas of wetland in the northern portion of the feature to account for the wetland loss in the southern portion. This wetland creation area is shown in blue on this figure. A monitoring plan for both the remediated area and the created wetland area has been developed and reviewed by GRCA staff as part of our permit review. Follow-up inspections by GRCA staff will be done in these areas during and post-construction. In terms of policy conformance, GRCA policy 8.4.4 applies to this permit. Uh, the subject wetland is less than 0.5 hectare, so it does meet the size requirement for removal, but the proposal does not meet a number of subsections, in particular, subsection C. So the wetland is identified as a core environmental feature within the region of Waterloo Greenland system and its natural open space within the Cambridge natural oh, area. The um, subsection F, the wetland is confirmed as significant wildlife habitat for amphibian species. Subsection G, the wetland also contains regionally significant wetland plants. And H, it is surrounded by woodlands and adjacent to other wetlands. Lastly, I and J, the wetland exhibits both groundwater and groundwater recharge and discharge functions. Although the policy, although the proposal does not meet current GRCA policy, staff feel that other factors should be considered in this case. Pri primarily the elevated concentrations of contaminants above MC MECP regulations, that human and ecological health risk can be reduced through remediation by preventing further discharge into the environment, that there is municipal support for this proposal, that the hydrologic function of the wetland will be maintained or enhanced, and the voluntary wetland creation proposed by the applicant with more wetland being created than lost. The timing of this project is also important to consider. The remediation of the southern portion of the wetland will take anywhere from eight months to two years, during which time that portion of the wetland would be unavailable as habitat and serve very little hydrologic function. 
in creating a new wetland outside the remediation area, these functions would be available in advance of the completion of the remediation. So based on those factors, staff recommend that GRCA permit application number 14823 submitted by South Cambridge GP Inc be approved. Okay, thank you. Great presentation, mm -hmm. I think it's very thorough. I'm going to put this on the floor and then we'll have a conversation. Uh, I'll read it and then the Grand River Conservation Authority permit application 14823 be approved, moved by Brian, second by Sue. Comments, questions? Sue? Uh, oh, you need to take the slideshow down yes. so we can see the screen, so we can see the people. Thank you. Um, Chair, so I know this area very well. I know, um, and some of the Cambridge councillors will know, it was quite a large encampment for quite a long time. Um, so they're going to try and clean up, and it was a huge dumping area. So is there going to be houses built here? Is that the plan down the road? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned in my presentation, there's actually an active draft plan of subdivision application in at the city of Cambridge for this property. So yes, it'll be a residential subdivision at some point if it gets to the planning process. Yes. Okay, and there's no, GRC is not paying anything for the cleanup, which is a blessing because it's going to be costly. So, um, okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Kevin, did you have something? I'm oh, sorry, Mike. I'm Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Um, interesting presentation, and we've done a great job of messing up our environment. A great job at that. But I have a question. I mean, there's no doubt that the area is contaminated from industry and what, what we have done. Is there, Do we have any idea if there's any traces of trichloroethylene 111 on that property? through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so we did review an environmental impact study, and as I mentioned, the environmental site assessment. Um, that being said, there are many, many chemicals that were listed in that report. Um, that's outside of our jurisdiction as far as what we do here at GRCA. We're looking more at, at the, the site in terms of does it contain wetlands and does it meet policy for removal? So I can't confirm whether or not it does. I can tell you that there are a number of um, chemicals that were listed in that site assessment. Okay. Do we have a copy of the site assessment? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, we do. Would I be able to get a copy of that? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, we can talk afterwards. I, I think we'd have to check um, to see whether or not we can um, provide that. You might be able to get it through um, the municipality. That might be a better um, avenue to get Okay, that's, that's fine. So that's, that's not a firm no, that's a soft no. Is that right? That's Thank you. No. It's it's not the reason that is, Mike. It's not our assessment, so we'd be handing out somebody else's work. But the municipality should have it. Okay, we're not. It's it's just not ours. We can't be handing out other people's stuff. Kevin, did you have something? Yeah. Uh, wonder if we can pull up slide figure three. Yeah. So, so the question I had, uh, Chris, on that slide was, I can clearly see the area that's going to be removed as a wetland. It's in red. That kind of looks like a modified Italian peninsula. Um, but I'm not quite clear from this what, which, what is going to be added as wetland. To you, Mr. Chair. So um, on this figure, so the area that's outlined in blue um is going to be the created wetland area but i think that to be honest the the thing that's a little confusing about this um this figure is the you'll see the the circle that's in the middle of the blue um that's going to actually be uh, a salamander breeding pond so it's deep it's a deep pool and then surrounding that there'll be a sort of like a slope that works its way up so there'll be a mixture of wetland and forest species similar to what you would see like in a natural environment where it starts with the wetland plants and then as you make your way up the slope it's forested um and then beyond that there's obviously the development limit where they're going to need to get you know heavy machinery and to get that slope built and that sort of thing i'm not sure if that answers your yeah, question so that's the blue the two ovals yes so, okay um Looks remarkably like the outline of a stormwater pond. 
It does, but I can assure you it will not be a stormwater pond. <laughs> okay, well, that's what I wanted. Thank you very much. Okay, can we drop the slides again, please? Sorry. S Sandy, go ahead. Thanks. Um, so they're asking for our approval because it's our land or um, like if, if we don't, uh, if, if we don't have any control over or we're not really concerned in a way with what the contaminants are, why do they need our approval? Through you, Mr. Chair. So that this actually is not GRCA owned property. This is a property owned by um, a, a private developer. Um, the reason why we are interested is it is a wetland and we regulate wetlands under Ontario Regulation 15006. So it does require a permit for its removal. So who determines when the area is clean then? Like, like who's, who's controlling that aspect of it? Through you, Mr. Chair. So there's a separate process um, involved with this where the Ministry of Environment, Conservation, and Parks require um, certain removals under the Ontario Environmental Protection Act. So they deal with the, the actual contaminant removals and judging you know, when enough is enough. Okay, thanks. Oh, sorry, I, there was one more thing I wanted to ask if I could. Um, I think in the report it said it was also a water recharge area. Is that, do I have that right? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, similar to, to most wetlands, um, there is a recharge and discharge functioning happening here in this wetland, um, which was another consideration that staff had in terms of you know the contaminants being there, if it's a recharge and discharge area. I mean, I think it's great to get it cleaned up. I was just wondering, it seems kind of odd that it would be a recharge area if it's contaminated. Can you explain that a little bit? Through you, Mr. Chair. Not being an ecologist, um, what I can say is a wetland can be a recharge area despite whether or not it's contaminated or not, right? So it's serving its natural function as a recharge um system but people can still go and and unfortunately you know pollute it and, and do all that kind of stuff so they're two separate things mike go ahead what i've seen here i mean i've lived in cambridge all my life um i've seen some messes that industry has made and i've worked in some of those industries and we have an opportunity here to clean up a mess for lack of better words and I support this 100%. I'm concerned about a couple issues, but we're improving the environment by cleaning up the mess. And I'm all, I'm all in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further comments or questions? Okay, the motion is on the floor. All in, all in favor? That is carried. I, I thought I did. Okay. Next item, we've got another presentation here, Grand River Watershed Report Card. I'll put the motion on the floor. Uh, Janet Ivey, welcome. I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, We're mandated to provide electronic entertainment at every meeting, like we did last time. So that's all this is. We're just meeting our mandates.
It's like kryptonite. It's better be a, a, a jolly presentation. Smoke them if you Come on, Sue, we're waiting for you. All right, we're, uh, I think we're fixed. We'll see. You want to give it a shot? Okay. Earmuffs on. Here we go. Thank you, Chair. Hopefully the sounds you'll hear next are, are a little more pleasant. I'm going to share highlights of the Grand Rivers report card prepared under Conservation Ontario's Watershed Checkup Program. This is a program that uses a standard set of indicators for forest and wetland conditions, as well as groundwater and surface water quality. I would like to point out that these report cards have some of the same limitations that you would see in a student's school report card. Much like a kid's report card, uh, it's a simplification of what's going on. It doesn't tell the whole story. So for that reason, I've added a little more information on some of the trends and other indicators to give you a, a little more broad picture of watershed health. And because it can some times be helpful to know the class average when you're considering your report card grade, I'm going to share some of the average provincial grades for some of these indicators. So we'll start with some good news on the wetland front. Five of our sub watersheds or parts of our watershed rated either excellent or good for wetland cover. So on this map, these are the two darkest shades of green that you see. And we still have some larger areas of forest and wetland in the watershed, including Luther Marsh in the north, Dunville Marsh in the south, and the forested areas on Six Nations land. While our forest conditions rated as fair to poor, so fair is green on this and poor is the light yellow, this is consistent with ratings that you find in other Southern Ontario watersheds where land has historically been cleared for agriculture and urban areas. And province-wide, Conservation Ontario assigned an average grade of fair for forest conditions. GRCA works to improve forest conditions and wetland health in a number of different ways, uh, including regulating development in and near wetlands, as we've just heard. Uh, we provide landowner grants for tree planting, for stream buffers, forest enhancement and wetland creation. And the tree planting and stewardship on our own properties are also important because about 7% of the total forest cover in our watershed are on our own lands. Moving on to groundwater quality, it was graded for both chloride and nitrogen as nitrate and nitrite. So these are constituents that can be naturally occurring in groundwater but may also be found at elevated levels as a result of a number of things, including road salt and uh, water softeners for chloride and fertilizers, manures, or septic systems for uh, nitrogen. Too much chloride or nitrogen in untreated drinking water can be harmful to human health. And this is a key consideration since about 80% of our watershed population relies on groundwater for drinking water. 
So again, the good news here is that the provincial monitoring wells that we track in the grant rated as excellent in almost all cases. So in this map, which shows the chloride levels, I draw your attention to the green uh, dots, which are excellent. This is a slight jolt there is the switch to the nitrogen map, again, green or excellent in most cases. Province-wide, Conservation Ontario assigned an average grade of good to groundwater quality. Unfortunately, those green dots don't tell us the whole story. We are seeing increasing trends in chloride at many sites and increasing trends in nitrite at some sites. So on these maps, this chloride map, you're looking at the green dots and that increasing or upward pointing chevron in some of the sites show where uh, uh, levels are increasing. And then again, some upward pointing chevrons for nitrate there. While the levels are still low in our monitoring wells, some municipal drinking water wells have been flagged under the source protection program as having rising fluoride and nitrate levels. So these are the purple dots that you see on this map for nitrate and the purple dots on this map for fluoride. GRCA does work to protect groundwater quality in a number of ways, including monitoring conditions, providing landowner stewardship grants for water quality projects, supporting municipalities and First Nations in drinking water source protection, and by providing environmental education and water awareness events. Surface water quality grades were based on phosphorus. So this is a nutrient that is naturally occurring in small amounts but can also be found in human and animal wastes and fertilizers. So too much phosphorus in the water can be harmful. It can result in algal blooms as well as uh, reducing the oxygen available for fish. So while most of our watershed rated as fair, that light green or uh, poor grades, the grand's grades again are consistent with other uh, neighboring watersheds in Southern Ontario and province-wide Conservation Ontario assigned an average grade of fair to surface water quality. While we do hope to see better grades in the future, this is an instance where the report card is not telling us the whole story. So if I draw your attention to this chart, this is not the stock market crashing. This is actually a good news story. This shows uh, the tremendous improvement and decline in phosphorus levels in the ground river uh, at a site just downstream of the region of Waterloo. So you can see uh, we've made great strides and in recent years, we are approaching that red line, which is the provincial water quality objective. So for us to reach that objective is going to take some collective effort from stormwater and wastewater managers, as well as the agricultural community. So chloride is a bit of a different um, story. So while the grades weren't assigned for chloride, we did take a look at the concentrations of chloride at our monitoring sites in comparison with a federal guideline for protecting aquatic life from chronic impacts. So while concentrations at most mining monitoring sites are below the threshold, so these are the green dots here, levels have been increasing since the 1970s and they do exceed the threshold in and downstream of some urban areas, which you see as the red dots. Another issue that's not captured by the report card uh, is rising winter nitrate levels in the Grand River. This will be of concern to communities that rely on the Grand for drinking water, including Brantford and Six Nations. So what are we doing? Our water quality programs include the watershed-wide wastewater optimization program, our landowner stewardship and outreach programs and operation of the continuous water quality monitoring stations. And in fact, we've recently installed a new nitrate sensor in the Brant water quality station. Once that data has been validated, the sensor will, be, will help us and downstream communities to better understand the nitrate conditions in the Grand River. So while I've highlighted what GRCA is doing to improve watershed health, it really is a shared responsibility with municipalities, First Nations, industry, landowners, and residents. So GRCA's next step is to bring these results to the water managers working group, 
which is the collective of municipal and First Nations water managers that supports implementation of our shared water management plan. We'll also to continue to support municipalities as they implement their master plans for water, wastewater, um, stormwater, as well as drinking water source protection and natural heritage planning. And very importantly, we will continue to deliver our water quality, conservation services, and watershed sciences programs. These are category two programs, so those ones that will not be levy supported, but rather will be delivered under municipal agreements starting in 2024. These are key programs for protecting and improving watershed health, and they benefit all, all municipalities by improving both local and downstream conditions. All right, thank you very much. That's a great report, some information I think we appreciate seeing, especially the new board members. So I'm gonna put the motion on the floor and then we'll uh, go from there. I have a, a recommendation that report number GM 032321, watershed report card be received for information. Moved by Bruce, seconded by Doug. Uh, comments, questions? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Chris. To Janet, so where does, so nitrates and chloride, is that from salt or where does that come from? Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, chlorides often come from road salting. Uh, they could be some localized effects from uh, water softeners as well. And uh, nitrates, um, as I said, can be naturally occurring, but often you'll see them in elevated laterals as a result of um, it could be fertilizers, it could be treated effluent from uh, municipal wastewater treatment plants or uh, runoff of manure. And then phosphorus, as you said, that comes from? Similarly, so it's a nutrient that you can see in, in either uh, rural or urban runoff and, and treated effluent. Right, and what causes those uh, green uh, blooms, algae blooms that you see in some parts of the river? Um, so both of them or just one in particular? Perhaps I'd ask Mark Anderson up. He uh, is more familiar with the blue-green algae than I am. <laughs> We're gonna get a moped. Okay, uh, sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. So the short answer is yes, both of those nutrients will contribute to the growth of algae in the river as well as some of the blue-green algae blooms that we experience in our reservoirs uh, and also ultimately having impacts on, uh, on Lake Erie. All right, and so when you see those kinds of blooms in the river, what, what does that say about the condition and quality of the river? Well, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so as Janet pointed out that we are in a condition where we're seeing elevated levels of both of those contaminants at some times of the year um, and that we do have some issues with, with uh, obviously with over fertilization of our river. Right, and so my last question to you is for those of us here that are elected officials in urban municipalities in the watershed, uh, what are the tips you can give us that uh, we should focus on in our operations and capital planning to minimize the impact on the river and improve the water, river quality? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, municipalities in our watershed have been actively uh, working to upgrade their wastewater treatment plants. So continuing to advance master planning for wastewater treatment, invest in municipal wastewater treatment plants, participating in our uh, optimization program to help municipalities uh, make the best and most efficient use of their existing plants and staff resources to improve effluent uh, municipal stormwater master planning and improvements will make a difference and investment in uh, our rural areas, investing in the rural water quality program and other uh, stewardship programs that support farmers in their own investments on their lands to uh, reduce nutrient and, and other runoff as well. You, you've reached your quota for the day. What's, what's your question? I'll repeat it. Question is, 
Okay, sorry, I thought it was a quick question I could repeat. Can you maybe use Mike's mic? Or Mike, if you turned yours off, Kevin? Can there, you? there we go. Oh, all right. Aha. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very simple question, I think, and that is uh, in, in Branford, because we draw our drinking water out of the river, um, as elected officials, we receive notices whenever there's a spill up upriver, and then we have to close the gates to our water treatment plant until the spill passes. And it happens uh, fairly frequently. Is there anything that can be done to encourage, facilitate whatever's happening, what needs to happen further upriver to minimize the number of spills? I won't name any names, but... Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, there, um, that is one of the uh, protocols that was developed and refined uh, through our water managers working group to support municipalities like Brantford downstream. We coordinated uh, improvements to the spills notification protocol, protocol. So it's the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks that handles uh, the spills notifications. I think investments, again, in improving wastewater treatment technologies can help minimize those periods of time when uh, wastewater treatment plants have bypasses, which are recorded as spills. Uh, and of course, in, you know, industrial processes and, and risk management plans also will reduce um, the, the number of spills that we see. And if there's one, one or several sources that do this repeatedly, what are the consequences, what can be done to make sure there's no further spills? Through you, Mr. Chair, that's uh, really the role of the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Sandy, did you have something? Yes, thanks. When I clicked a link in the report and um, got a little more detail, I, I was particularly concerned with the Conestoga River because that runs through our area, but I noticed a lot of the reports where it uh, rated poorly was around tree cover. So I wonder if uh, if we work with anyone on tree cover or being it's quite agricultural and farmed, maybe that's not something that we can uh, fix readily. Through you, Mr. Chair, that is one of the main ways that we work to improve uh, watershed health. So we do have a tree planting program that helps uh, subsidize and cost share tree planting on private lands. Uh, and we do work uh, very closely with the agricultural community on that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one sec, David. Uh, Mike, I think you were next. No, actually, all my questions have been asked and answered well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sue? Wow. John, have you got something new? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. One of the things that uh, also should be considered by municipalities, and uh, kudos to Wellington County uh, Road Salt, road salt uh, Winter Management Program, uh, and it's, uh, it's an, an, an international program. Uh, requires certification and certified and it does make a great difference and if your municipality does not have uh, any certified under that program that may be a consideration because uh, uh, road salt is a major has a major impact on groundwater thank you yeah we've got a couple things going for us we've got that program plus we have the green legacy we've got two full nurseries in the county and the trees are practically given away thank you john david Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I was, I was listening to the answers from staff, and I, I appreciate them. Um, what what can we do? They mentioned a water, enhanced water treatment. Um, and I think we all know that it's far, far cheaper to prevent the contaminants from getting in the water before rather than treat them. <laughs> when you're treating them, then, then you, it, it becomes significantly more money. So um, in our municipality. I did sit on the uh, rural water quality program for 12 years. I seen a lot of great projects. Um, so I would say to any municipalities and uh, this is to Brantford, you're more than welcome to come back to the rural water quality program. We'd love to have you back and uh, we can continue to work together on uh, those projects that help keep our watershed clean. 
there's an invitation. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Uh, I'm going to read the motion then, which is, did I read it? I'll read it again, whatever. That the report number GM 032321 watershed report card be received as information. Okay. All in favor. That is carried. Thank you very much. And then moving along to the flood notification system, I will put the motion. Thank you for those for that information, by the way. You guys are well informed. Uh, recommendation that report number GM 032330 Grand River Watershed Flood Warning System be received as information. Moved by Brian, seconded by. Is that you, Christine? Yay. Seconded by Christine. Any comments or questions? I would just say based on the map that you see with the response, the communication system seems to be working very well, which is a critical part. You know, whenever you do emergency management and everything, it always comes down to, can you, can you reach people, right? And the fact that that system is working is critical and that's our core mandate. So, uh, did I get a move on second? I'm losing it. Okay. Call the question, all in favor? That's carried. That's why I want to do that sheet. Okay, so moving right along to uh, 1211, current watershed conditions. And this is uh, that report number GM 032329, current watershed conditions as of March 15th, 2023, be received as information moved by Gord, seconded by John. Comments or questions? Yeah. Rob, Doug, Rob. Rob, did you have a question earlier? Uh, yeah, th through the chair. Thanks, Chair White. Um, my question was, down here in the Dunville area, um, where everything kind of ends up before it gets to Lake Erie, we don't have a lot of snow, and uh, we haven't had that much rain. There's rain tomorrow called, of course, but I was wondering, is there a lot of snow up west, and what is our capacity of our reserves, our reservoirs, I mean, right now? I I'm assuming um, this time of year, they're pretty well at capacity with uh, the runoffs. If I can get an update on that. Welcome, sir. I'll turn the floor over to you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, we do have um, uh, actually uh, storage in reservoirs. Right now, we're in a filling cycle. Actually, we did have a significant melt yesterday. Uh, we're still dealing with it today as well. The reservoirs are on their way to uh, April 3rd target, and we seem that um, we believe that we do have enough capacity to capture all the runoff. Yeah, you're right. The snow has melted significantly across the watershed. There's still some left in some edges, and uh, all fields are gone. Some some forests and edges are left, but we're confident that we can uh, control it, and there are no flooding concerns at the moment. All right. Anything further? Go ahead, Sue. Just a quick email I just got. We're getting a storm this afternoon and, and into tomorrow morning, freezing rain um, overnight into the morning with snow, but uh, GRCA is already stating that they're not concerned about flooding. Just want to tell everybody, be safe. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you very much. Moving along, uh, recommendation. Thanks for the information there. That the uh, general membership enter into a closed meeting in accordance with the municipal section 239 for the following purposes, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land and labor relations or employee negotiations. All uh, open. Somebody has a chair. What's that? I just need to. New York Times is at the door. We got to get them in. So, it's like a vacuum. People go out there and they just, thanks. All right, thanks, Sam. So we have one motion out of our closed session. In order to further the objects of the Grand River Conservation Authority by assisting a member municipality in improving municipal servicing, Therefore, be it resolved that the Grand River Conservation Authority convey an easement over lands described as part of Lot 11 Eagles Nest Track in the city of Brantford be, uh, to be more fully, to be more particularly described on a reference plan to be deposited 
for the purposes of a utility road for the nominal consideration of two dollars. Moved by John, second by Kevin. I can't. I can't. So I got one of my, Sorry. One of my contacts noted. Please. Sorry. Just moved by John, seconded by Bruce. Anything further? All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming up today and being online and the folks that are here. And we'll, we'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Sorry. Bruce and Brian and Jerry and Sue and Rob and Sean. Pam's in there. Thanks, Sandy. Christine wants to stay. Take care, everybody. Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, confidential stuff, does it stay here, I assume? Thank you.